welcome today we would talk about a very very important and a burning topic and that is climate refugees now this is not a topic that has been commonly heard of but in the coming few years this topic would become indeed a burning topic and therefore it's a very important topic for your preparation for your examination now if you look onto the world map you can have the various areas here the northernmost area is the area which is highly prone to the activities generated by permafrost or ice then you have area which is affected by desertification shown in yellow the area with pink is shown with a region where, which is highly susceptible to hurricane and then you have blue regions which are susceptible to the uh, coastal flooding or i would say the river belt action because of the delta uh, which is there and then you have small blue dots that could be seen and those are the small islands which are vulnerable now all these places on the globe which you can see as vulnerable spots are important because over the years what has happened is these areas are highly affected as a result you have a lot of migration which is taking place because of climate now this migration which occurs because of climate has no other parameters attached to it it's not related to the economic development not related to rural urban migration but it's only and only related to the vagaries of the climate that have been occurring now if we want to classify this type of migration i can broadly say we can divide this into three types of migration the first is an environmental emergency migration that occurs and this is a temporary phenomena it could be because of earthquake landslide flooding that occurs but it is temporary in nature and it's an emergency response to a situation that has happened the next is environmental forced migration now this forced migration means because of the situations which are worsening in that area people need to migrate to some other place the third important aspect is a environmental motivated migration which means because you predict that in future this region could be in danger for example let's say a lot of flooding taking place in assam so some of the people might consider that this is a place which could be susceptible in future so they try to move out before anything has happened and that is a motivated migrant so be it any of these three categories all these create a kind of migratory pattern which is called as an environmental migration of which if there is a immediate need for displacement that occurs we call it a, a climate refugee now if we look on to the statistics or the forecasts that have been given for 2050 it's believed that nearly 140 million people in the regions of africa latin america and south asia would be displaced and what would be the reasons for it it could be because of failure in the crop it could be because of poor agriculture uh, drought condition flood condition close coastal flooding storms in certain cases or any other climate vagary that could happen so those are some of the reasons that have been defined because of which this migration would take place now if we say that we are able to limit the process of global warming this figure could drastically reduce from 140 million to merely 40 million and that's a remarkable figure so first we have to understand that global warming is one of the major culprits now most of the migration if we see be it india or global we say that this migration occurs from a rural area to an urban area and that's because of the land degradation deforestation activities desertification taking place and that's where you have the climate refugees that are seen another important reasons are political unrest associated to the climate phenomena and in the coastal areas obviously there is lots of coastal flooding that is seen commonly we have seen uh, the highest of the decade in mumbai in the 2017 floods which was seen a severe devastation similar Lee, it happened in 2018 in the Kerala floods. 2019, we have witnessed it in Assam. So there have been episodes that have registered one after the other. You had the landslides that were seen in the regions of Uttarakhand. So 
this displacement because of the climatic activities the climate change and its impact onto some of the most prone areas or the most vulnerable areas is very very important the internal monitoring uh, center estimates that every year nearly 24 million people migrate and these are because of one or the nat other natural disaster that is occurring in some part of the world or other so what should be done in order to mitigate it first of all we have to build in resilient infrastructure so better infrastructure for example in japan we say we have earthquake resistant buildings similarly we have to prepare ourselves for the ground realities now each of the location have their own individual uh, uh, drawbacks we could say and based on that we have to prepare the ground for that reality we have to create more number of jobs better education services better healthcare services so if we look on to a global picture it's believed that in the sub-saharan region of africa there would be a lot of migration and this migration would tend to move towards north africa when north africa won't be able to accommodate it this would move to the regions of europe Similarly, migration patterns have been registered in India where you have a lot of migration that would be registered from Bangladesh, which is 5 to 20 million population that would be migrating from Bangladesh towards India. And that's how we understand that there is something that need to be done. It could be resilient in the field of agriculture, making cities less vulnerable, developing mega cities on much stronger perspective could be some of those. And then definitely there should be climate change displacement facility that should be working. International monetary agent, um, uh, international uh, policy or treaty frameworks that should be working. And once the disaster has happened, there has to be quick responses, rehabilitation teams that need to work for it. So disaster preparedness before the disaster is again important. Uh, creating a kind of response plan, improving the uh, flood defense system, relocation of the families and so on. So if you look on to worldwide picture, what are the areas and why are they affected? So if we talk about Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, we say unpredictable rainfall is one of the major regions. In Dhaka in Bangladesh and Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, you have storms that is one of the uh, major factors that are there. In the regions of Kerala as and Mumbai, we say uh, flooding is there. So coastal areas highly vulnerable to the rising sea levels. Small island developing nation, that's the term commonly used these days. And those are the nations which are really, really facing a hard time as of now. So over the years, we have witnessed that there should be a immediate response to the situation. Otherwise, this problem would keep on developing. If we look onto the picture of India, as I said, from Bangladesh, you have a lot of migration coming in. Uh, one of the major responses to it is the salt intrusion, which is seen in the Sundarban Delta region. Also, most of the Bangladesh, at least four fifth of the Bangladesh land, we would say, is only five feet above sea level and two third of the land is only 15 feet above sea level. So Bangladesh becomes one of the most vulnerable countries in response of the rising uh, ocean levels. So there could be a huge migration of 5 to maybe 100 million population to India as one of the uh, neighboring countries and this would be one of the biggest climate refugees that India would have to take care of. Similarly, if you look on to Uttarakhand, there have been cases of landslides that were reported and you won't believe in 2011 census it was reported that nearly 1000 villages are there which have no population and nearly 4, 400 villages have less than 10 residents because the people have migrated from those areas in response to the issues that have coming up. Now, uh, as per the 1951, you had the refugee convention that was given. So 1951 refugee convention or what we call as 1967 protocol that was laid down. Uh, international law does not recognize climate refugees under this category. And uh, 
it's not making any legal provisions to make them or provide the nations any kind of protection in line of that so what we need to do along with other countries is to either uh, work for a treaty where this climate refugees could be taken into account otherwise it could create political unrest in the future generations as well now what have been the uh, challenges have been very very important now whenever we talk about climate change some of the most important challenges that could be witnessed are understanding where these people should move so if it's a kind of monetary constraint or economic constraint moving to far off places far flung places would not be practical similarly we need to understand what would be the optimum location and the population pressure that could be sustained so as we said sub saharan country which is one of the major hubs of migration and then you have bangladesh so if there has been a constant migration from these areas to the neighboring areas it would definitely create a huge pressure on the neighboring areas as well so those are some of the real ground problems that need to be addressed and as i said this is one of the very burning topics very very important and by 2050 we believe there could be a lot of displacement that could occur because of the climate change so this is one of the very important topics that you could expect for your upcoming examinations we'll be covering many such important topics in your upcoming sessions have a wonderful day ahead